Hey guys, what's up? I am Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and today in this video, I'll be talking about cracking the first job here in Canada. The first job is the most difficult job to get. So what should be the tips for that? We'll be talking about that. What problems you might face? We'll be talking about that. Should you have a plan B? We'll talk about that. We'll talk also about the social media like LinkedIn. Is it useful or not? We'll talk all about that in a conversation with Nikhil, who landed here just a few days before the lockdown started. So he's seen all the struggles. He's worked in different job before getting his project management job and now he has got two different offer letters so here's a chance to learn from his experiences and the tips that he has to share with us all right guys so we finally have nikhil here uh, and i'm really sorry that my voice is actually echoing in here i know that i'll fix that in the next video but anyways we have nikhil here uh, and I'm pretty sure that his voice is pretty crisp and clear. That's what you need to hear. So, welcome, Nikhil. Thanks, Sitanshu. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. I think it will be indeed a pleasure to share my learning and experiences with the fellow job seekers, which will certainly help them in their journey. So, would you like to start with the introduction? Like, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, where, like, how did you start your journey? Uh, when you landed here in Canada, and what's your job sector? Okay, so I am a project manager, uh, B.Tech and MBA, and uh, I have six years of work experience in project management and process improvement. So I came to Canada about six months back, in, uh, landed in the middle of March, right before the borders were sealed. So I was lucky enough to land in time, you know, so that's a bit about me. And then that's where my journey, Canadian journey started. So what problems did you face in finding the first job? Yeah, so like I said, I landed in mid-March, right before the borders were sealed. So uh, I landed here in mid-March and the following weekend, the lockdown was announced. Now, everything, that's when, you know, that was a tipping point that people started going into panic mode. Like uh, everyone around me was like, you know, panicking that what's going to happen, everything shutting down, you know, probably going into a pause, I'm in hibernation mode. So that's when, you know, and I was, since I was in quarantine, I couldn't go out, right? I couldn't even open my bank account. So it was that bit of a tense situation. And then, you know, I just kept my cool. I just stayed back and I said, okay, in this time, you know, I will just first, in first week, I was just observing, right? That what's going on, actually getting a hang of the situation because I was going through a jet lag and while going through a jet lag, the lockdown was uh, announced. So then, uh, I thought, you know, I'll start applying for my jobs. So yeah, after a week or so of rest, you know, and settling down a bit, I started applying for my jobs only to know that, you know, the jobs have been taken off the sites. So that was my plan planning, right? So I have to go find my core job. But then I said that while this, you know, uh, people will settle down and they figure out that what's going to happen and the way forward. So I thought that, you know, I'll take up a second job, you know, just to get started. And that's where, you know, I joined Loblaw and uh, uh, I thought that, you know, sitting back home, sitting back home, uh, you know, won't help me much because, you know, when you're sitting at home, your, your horizon is limited, right, to the home. You're not going out, you're just applying for jobs, looking for jobs. Now, this Loblaws gave me an opportunity to learn. So my focus was on learning more than, you know, just uh, uh, earning. So I was learning the Canadian way of working. It gave me an opportunity to work, uh, learn the Canadian way of working, the social formal etiquette, and of course, have a working knowledge or understanding of retail operations. That's where, you know, I uh, came up with my plan B. Okay, so my prim primary career focus would be project management and uh, process improvement. But then I also have now an alternative career option, which would be in retail operations, you know, operations management of retail so this way I was able to uh, execute my plan B. Okay, so uh, you said about your job, the kind of a survival job that you, that you did. Uh, so you opted for that job. How did you find that job? Because finding that job sometimes is even a, is a problem for some people. So, you know, I focused on retail sector because it was active the most and 
you know, I found out the who is the leader here in you know retail industry, and that was the Love Love Lodge. It's the leading retailer in Canada, right? The largest. So I focused on you know finding uh, any job you know that I get in Love Lodge just to get my foot in the door. So that's why I went on their website. I look for the openings, you know, any store, uh, you know, store level openings, and then that's how I got a call from them. Okay. And I was able to land my first job. Right. So um, you already told about why you actually uh, you know bent for for the survival job. So we want to talk about how that job actually helped you gain that experience, that, that kind of experience. People somehow uh, you know sometimes refer to it as Canadian experience. Canadian experience basically is nothing like uh, is is no special experience. It's like the etiquette, the Canadian culture, it's the soft skills that you actually developed working over there. So, you, do you want to talk about that? How your survival job actually helped you to get your core job? We'll, we'll come to the core job after this. Learn as much as possible, right? Because once I was in the, my foot was in the door, I was working. I had no tension at the back of the mind. I don't have a job. I'm sitting at home, right? I was working. My focus was on refining myself, you know, embracing a new culture. And it starts from the ground level. Like I, I, I started off my career with sales in a startup. So I strongly believe that if you don't dirty your hands at the ground level, it becomes very difficult to sit at the top and make decisions or walk, work your way up, right? So, you know, I thought this is a perfect opportunity to interact with people, though the risk factor was high, but, you know, I could uh, interact with people and learn as much as I could. All right, so moving over to your core jobs. So how were you able to crack those jobs? How did you apply through LinkedIn or what was the journey all about? So, you know, before coming to Canada, in fact, you know, I made a roadmap where I look for certification which were relevant and widely accepted in Canada. So I, in terms of certifications, I'm a PAP certified, a certified Scrum Master and a Lean Six Sigma Green Belt. So, you know, I thought that all these certifications are widely accepted in Canada. So before coming coming here, I made a roadmap and I achieved all these milestones while I was back in India. So, you know, so once I landed here, I came here almost prepared. Of course, you know, nobody can be fully prepared, right? It takes time to gel into the culture, understand the dynamics of the job environment, right? So I had my, once I had my certifications, I got, you know, I got an advice from someone that, you know, uh, joined these government funded organizations so these are employment agencies which are you know uh, helping newcomers settle in canada basically free of cost yes of course they're free of cost and i was i got associated with jbs toronto and uh, and uh, triac t r i e c mentor mentorship program wherein you'll be assigned a mentor so i i joined this program in april and i attended their workshop it's a four day workshop wherein they will tell you about the uh, Canadian job market landscape, what an employer expects from its candidates, you know, uh, formatting the resume as per standards. Now, this will help you create a foundation. You will gain some understanding. And this is this was really helpful for me. And then I was also, like I said, I joined Triac Mentorship Program where I was assigned a mentor and uh, of similar career focus. So since I am into project management, so my mentor was somewhere, was also into project management. I think just to add what we were discussing earlier that many people sometimes say that you know these uh, agencies don't really help much uh, but because it's free of cost you've got nothing to lose since you're, like if you're just sitting at your home it's definitely better to you know get associated with oh. agencies and going out you know gelling with people getting to know the things better would certainly help you in a way even if it won't help you getting a job but at least it will help you in a way so I would definitely recommend you know going for such uh, employment services, which is basically, of course, funded by Government of Canada. So you've got nothing to lose, basically, there. Absolutely. And uh, just to add to what you said also, here, you start, the, uh, you learn the art of networking as well, right? Yeah. You get to know a lot of people because it's just, it's not just me. There are a couple of people who are in your batch, right? So that's how you widen your uh, social network, right? And networking is one more thing which is very valuable. And that just brings me to, you know, uh, becoming active. This led me to become active on LinkedIn as well, to increase my profile visibility. So I started posting content, you know, 
connecting with the job seekers i speak to a lot of job seekers so i connect with them and you know uh, share my learning experience as well so becoming active on linkedin while you while i was you know uh, searching jobs on indeed and uh, monster also right so i would certainly try to make another video on linkedin it definitely deserves a, a complete video dedicated to itself and uh, i would like to you know invite a couple of linkedin influencers in, the, in that video uh, that is a work in progress but uh, until then we both are there on linkedin so if you want to join our social network in linkedin um, his name is his full name is nikhil pal singh and you know me my name is uh, shitan shitiwari so you can join me on linkedin was it linkedin only through which you got your uh, core job yes i think so because you know i was posting content i was uh, speaking to a lot of recruiters i was connecting with a lot of uh, professionals from project management and process improvement so uh, in one year i say i have had more than uh, i've added more than 1000 connections you know and i have spoken to a lot of people right so this has helped me certainly you know uh, increase my profile visibility yeah and that is how you know i have been able to get my first breakthrough right it's all about you know visibility okay so what is your uh, advice to the new immigrants who are just coming here maybe uh, obviously this uh, pandemic thing is going to last for long now it's not like uh, you know it was for this first three months and next year it won't be there it would certainly be there for sure and we all know it by now so what will be your advice to all those people who are who are joining in uh, you know coming to um, Canada from all the various parts of the world. So, what will be your advice to all of them? So, it starts with you know you have to create a roadmap. It's a journey, right? It's a new country, so it takes time to settle, and we should be aware of that fact. You come here, you don't get your job A, have a plan B ready. You pursue your all relevant certifications. Like, I come from project management and process improvement, so I had my certifications you know uh, pursued already. similarly there are certain uh, professions which are regulated you know you need a license for them so you have to prepare you have your certifications you have a plan a doesn't work out go for plan b now you know in this age that the employers are not conducting uh, in person interviews they are all uh, video interviews or one way recorded pre recorded interviews so for that you know i used to stand in front of mirror i used to you know talk to myself i used to uh, watch my facial expressions and you know i've sometimes i was frowning so you know i that's how you know i uh, refine myself it's a continuous improvement you know it's like the uh, deming cycle they say it's pdc you plan do check act it's like a whole circle of continuous improvement so you know i used to uh, record myself listen to myself and then you know refine it and i've gotten way better i tell you sachin you it has really helped me so you record yourself you refine yourself there's no hard rule you know or maybe you know a uh, set rule it pursue what works best for you right i stay and then of course you know uh, once you have you are in your plan b then you you know stay active you need dedication you need commitment you know you need a discipline even though i used to come back from my job at 10 pm at night i still used to come and i used to ensure that i apply for jobs one or two it's a full time job job search is also a full time job right so thank you so much uh, nikhil that was really helpful i am pretty sure that our audience would also benefit a lot uh, you know learning from your experience and the tips that you gave so thanks a lot for your time thanks shitanshu it's a pleasure and uh, for job seekers who are watching this video you can always connect with me and i'll be happy to you know share my learnings and experience with all of you thank you shitanshu once again sure thank you so much